I'm going to show you a fantastic game played by Domaraju Gukesh in the in Norway chess uh, last year. In fact, in June last year, um, I'm looking at one of his games because he has now qualified for the 2024 Candidates Tournament, and I want to celebrate all eight players who have qualified for the tournament over the next few weeks, over the next few months, building up to the Candidates Tournament in April. Anyway, listen, let's just look at this game because it is fantastic. And I have to say, I'm delighted that Gukesh has qualified for the Candidates. 17 years old, such an exciting player. I think what characterises a lot of his games is his willingness to go in for complications, and we see that in this game. So it starts out as a kind of London system. I should say Gukesh playing white, Ariantari from Norway playing black. So it's a kind of London system, Torrey system. It's hard to give this one a name, but I think we all know uh, this kind of setup very, very well. Super solid pawn structure. The bishop outside the pawn chain. The knights go here. Black has played, instead of putting the pawn on d6, Tari has put his pawn on d5, claims a bit more space in the centre, but it means that white can use that e5 square. b6, yeah, bringing this one into the game potentially, and h4. So typical of Gukesh, he's looking to stir things up from the word go. And you can get away with this kind of flank advance when the centre is really solid, you know, it's hard for black to break this one down, this pawn structure. c5, but black claims some space in the center. Knight e5 hits the outpost. Knight d7, challenging that knight. Now, in a very interesting moment, Gukesh decides to play bishop e2. You could even play h5 straight away, and this exchange sacrifice is not so silly actually but well he played a little bit steadier played bishop e2 now h5 opening up the h5 really is a threat you know in this kind of position once the h file opens it's not going to be too difficult for white to castle queenside and then potentially you know use both rooks on the h file so I think Tari's response here, h5, is pretty wise. It really is time to stop h5. Now, white could just castle here, or you could just play knight f3, supporting the knight. But Gukesh's next move, I think, is so typical of him. He's looking to try and wrong-foot his opponents, looking for complications. He's looking for an adventure, knight c6. So this is already a little bit unusual. So he's seen an opportunity to really go for it. So he pushes the queen to e8. And now b4. So his idea is to support that far advanced knight on c6. We want to support it with b5. Really interesting. So very, very ambitious. So if bishop b7, b5, and you don't really want to take there, that would be a bit embarrassing for this knight. So knight g4, right, what's that about? Well, that's to do with supporting this advance with e5. And as white's king is still in the middle, looks like a very sensible break to go for. It's the break you want to play anyway. And if this knight is captured, then... For example, well, here, knight f6. This actually wins the piece. So, Gukesh castles. e5. Okay, he's got to put up with this. And now this knight, was it sensible to put it right in the enemy camp like this? Let's see. Bishop b7 is probably the most prudent move, but I mean, this is a highly unclear position after white takes this and then puts the bishop back here. You know, there's a lot of pressure on this center 
And these bishops are very interesting. You know, if this one is taken, you, you've always got to watch out for a bishop coming in here. Very double-edged position. Tyre plays queen e6, which looks like a very natural move to attack the knight and support the knight on g4. But it's incredible what Gukesh has prepared against this. b5 supports the knight. Okay, a good starting move. I think that one is predictable. Bishop b7. But now watch, happen. watch what happens. The center just explodes here. This is an incredible move. c4. Completely fluid center. So why is he playing like this? Well... This queen is actually quite vulnerable. Let's look at this. So bishop takes knight, pawn takes. If queen takes, you take here. And because the light squared bishop has disappeared, then black is vulnerable on this diagonal. So, for example, if this is taken. Bishop f3. The queen steps back. Then white just has a nice center there. So Tari plays knight df6, hoping to support these center pawns and then perhaps collect this one later. Okay, what is the next move for white? What did Gukesh play next? This is absolutely fantastic. You have a think, I'll have a drink. Are you ready? e4 wow 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 what a move this is just incredible so the idea is just to punch through with d5 to support that pawn on c6 if this pawn is taken then yeah this pawn can be taken and white is obviously doing very well there um this can be taken as well if d takes d5 supports that pawn on c6. Likewise, this one looks tremendous for white. So, Tari played knight takes pawn. One could take here, but even better to do this. Takes and d5. So, Gukesh has succeeded in supporting that pawn on c6. This all started with plonking the knight on c6, but and he's managed to support that pawn. It's amazing. And this queen is vulnerable. I think this is the problem, that bishop f3 is going to come supporting the pawns, hitting the queen, and that's really nasty. The knight came back. Bishop f3 queen f5 and d6 well watch out so this bishop supports the pawn if let's say this rook moves i mean it's vulnerable on this diagonal if it moves into the middle then c7 and bishop b7 and it's that simple this pawn is rolling through it's incredible therefore tari decided to play e4 supporting, uh, sorry, blocking out this bishop, but the problem is that this bishop on g3 now comes into the game, supporting the pawn on d6. Bishop e2, that's just going to bounce around. Okay, watch out for this one. Rook c1. That covers this square. Knight b4. c7. They're going through. I mean, look at this. This is this is coming next. Bishop d4. Okay, black's pieces are impressive. Um, Tari is doing his best to to block out the queen, which would support those pawns. I mean, if black can maybe sacrifice an exchange here for one of the pawns, then he could could be doing pretty well. But Gukesh follows up really vigorously. Queen a4. Still wants to get in d7. a6. So he wants to play, Tari wants to play b5, shutting out the queen. d7 anyway. So this had to be calculated. Um, 
The point is that after b5, this happened. Bishop takes pawn, and then you can take the rook here. Now, if that's taken, then you get a new queen, and white wins. So queen takes d7, queen takes e4. So Tari has managed to eliminate one of the pawns. Problem is that this pawn is still supported by the bishop. If, if black could get rid of the pawn on c7, then with that lovely bishop on d4, it could be a different story, but no. This is still way too strong. Knight takes e2. Okay, trying to scrabble to get some kind of compensation. The rook is attacked, moves to the open file. So a simple queen exchange could win the game. Bishop f6 covers. And now some powerful punches here. Rook d1 hitting the queen. Doesn't want to retreat. Uh, I mean, if queen f5, then you can exchange and play rook d6. This is going to be winning pretty swiftly with rook c6 or, or rook b6 and rook, rook b8, actually. Rook b6 and rook b8. So bishop d4 shuts out the rook, but again, really powerful punches from Gukesh. Queen c2, excellent move, hitting the knight, but also threatening queen takes c5, exploiting that pin. Queen e6 steps away and supports the knight, but the queen is not stable here. Rook e1, hitting the queen, and that's just too much. Queen c4, an exchange of queens. Bishop d6 threatens the rook. Rook c8. Bishop c5, end of game. If the bishop takes, rook d8 seals the deal. And in fact, that pawn actually goes through to the queen, queening square. What a game, what a concept. It, it takes a lot of bravery to play a move like knight c6. You know, it could just end up stranded on that square. The whole concept with b4, b5, incredibly ambitious, but it paid off, and in fact, it was this pawn. Was it this pawn? Possibly that pawn uh, that went all the way to the queening square. Anyway, one of the, one of those pawns did. I've lost track of which one it was, but yeah, a really daring concept. The thing is, if it goes wrong, you look a real idiot. You know, you should have stuck to something more orthodox, <clears throat> but it paid off. Absolutely fantastic, and... I think it's great that Gukesh has qualified for the candidates. As I said, I'll be looking at all the players who are participating in the candidates tournament uh, over the next few weeks, over the next few months. It takes place from, from memory 2nd to the 25th of April in Toronto. Um, so I'll be building up to it. Um, in the meantime, we've got the Tata Steel tournament to look forward to starting on from, on the 12th of January. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all those that have supported me on Patreon and on PayPal. If you want to do a one-off donation on PayPal, then check out the link. Uh, thank you to all those that, that have donated there. I look forward to showing you lots more chess in 2024.